Yeah, I gotta figure that out. We're back on the 56 Chevy here at Freeman's Garage and we're gonna finish up our original factory parking brake system refurbishment. We worked on this in some previous videos. They're all linked down in the video description to watch after this. And we got parts we've been waiting for so that we can finish this. We will open this up after we get the rest of our parts and pieces here ready for reassembly. Previously, we got all these parts here media blasted and painted, such as our spring, etc. Our big brackets here. These are the glue, the family patriarch of the parking brake system. And previously, I did explain why we're leaving some of the hardware unpainted after media blasting. This hardware we're leaving unpainted for the memento, that is. But I explained that previously. It's all linked in the video description. And we did get our brackets for our rollers media blasted previously they need some paint hint hint wink wink of one of the things that might be in the box we're going to open later and this whole giddy up here we're not going to touch this today because a uh Freeman's garage viewer uh reconfirmed my suspicion that yeah that's not the original 56 chevy parking brake handle and we want to go original i've sourced one it's coming in the U.S. mail, so we're just, we're, we're, not, we're, we're not touching this because we're going to want to be able to manhandle this and whatnot to uh, swap the handle out. So we're just going to leave that alone. And our rear cable here, we got to get all this media blasted. The springs, the cable, we're going to do it all in one all in one shot it's partially blasted because if you recall or if you haven't seen it yet link below previous video we smoked this shot back so we got a new one that we're going to play with and it's got a lot more power it's a lot bigger it's going to be fun and um, let's see what else well i haven't found these reproduction so we're probably going to possibly reuse these. But these parts here, the rubber pieces that keep crud out of here, we got repops. Got repops in the box. So I'll be playing with that. But yeah, so let's pick up where we left off. But actually, let's get this grease off of here. Let's get these pieces off real quick we don't want those in the blast cabinet oh the forward cables in here looks like we finished blasting it so that's done all right Let's have a blast. Clean our viewing window. I sprayed some glass cleaner on here. Here's the new shop vac. It's a four and a quarter horse, nine gallon craftsman. Sweet so far. I haven't even uh, attached the handle to it yet or anything. I've used it once to vacuum up mouse poop. And I stick it into this bucket. I run this hose. The hose is attached to that hole right there. And when the debris in the air gets into this bucket, it spins in a circle and it all falls to the bottom and nothing but clean air goes through the filter. And I stick the shop vac outside the door to exhaust outboard. Looks pretty fan damn tastic. Took longer than I wanted to, mostly because of just waiting for the compressor to keep up. About an hour, I guess. Took long enough that I had to go in and stir the chili. All right, now let's get our rear and front cable painted along with our brackets for our pulleys, our wheels. 
and then we will open up that box and get those new parts out and you know we're not going to paint the the actual cable itself because that's just going to get rubbed raw through usage anyways and i highly doubt that was painted from the factory i gotta say that shop vac working great and the lights i got set up in here and things that i like i usually link some uh some tools and parts of whatnot in the description just so that way if you need something hey i've already done all the arm play for you <laughs> i mean <laughs> i mean leg work <laughs> oh man we're going with the two-in-one for men shampoo plus conditioner guys you know what i'm talking about semi-gloss because that's what we painted all our other suspension parts and all you know the undercarriage type stuff with and i think that that's as close as possible to what it probably was from the factory there's a little air and burr right there i want to take off before we paint this Putting a little bit of tape on the cable just because just try to make things nice and clean and again you know that the, the, the cables the the parking brake the whole all the parking brake stuff is one of these deals that's just gonna be drunk through the mud and the water and all that kind of stuff you know all those elements out on the out on the roadway. So I'm trying not to be too, you know, spend too much time doing this, but I don't know. I just don't want to be sloppy. Everything is a dark, wet, cold, cluttery mess in the paint booth. So I'm not sure how my, I'm even going to really set you up to see me drop a pro paint job on this. I just sprayed this off with brake cleaner. So now I'm just making sure it's completely dry. I'm going to throw some semi-gloss on this and we'll let everything dry and we'll reconvene on the trunk lid and we'll open that box. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to work. Yeah, that's a great plan. Let's do it. Okay. I like. Daddy like. Let's find a place for this to sit, and yeah, yeah, same plan as before. We'll reconvene on the trunk lid. Yeah, I've been doing some, a uh, little bit of reorganizing here in the garage, so things are more cluttered than usual. Gotta just hang parts where you can sometimes. No, I don't want a credit card. Can you get a credit card with a 56 Chevy on it? So here's our rollers. 
55 through 57 Chevrolet. Nice. It's got the hardware we need. Since our original hardware is toast for our rollers, where were these made? Are these made in the USA? They don't say. You'd think if, it, if they were, they'd be bragging about it. And here are our rubber bootes. It says on here, 47 through 59 Chevrolet GMC truck, 41 through 58 Chevrolet full-size passenger car, 56 to 62 Corvette replacement, 65 to 82 Corvette emergency brake cable boot. Just ignore that part right there. I didn't know that when I ordered it. Let's let all of our parts cure overnight. They're dry to the touch, but it's a little chilly and damp. They're not they're gonna take a while to cure, even with the heat gun. So let's just let them sit overnight, and then we will re-reconvene at the trunk lid. All right, here we are. Top of the morning to you, laddie. Let's start with getting these wheels in place. And yes, I'm wearing the same clothes as yesterday. They didn't get that dirty, okay? All right. Oh yeah, these turned out great. Pretty good for painting in the dark. We're good. These pulleys are identical, so it does not matter which bracket they go to. But I can tell you that the way that these were installed, possibly originally, the way they were when we took them off the car, was the nut was on this side of this bracket and this side of this bracket. And check out the difference in the hardware between what was on the car, which is most likely original, in the new look how much the broken pulleys wore this hardware down see it's supposed to look like this you know let like a bolt not like a jigsaw puzzle this one's got some good wear in it too and actually for kicks and gigs here's our old pulleys This one probably would break on us if we tried to use it. It is bent. This one though, completely was broken in two pieces. They look identical though, don't they? I guess that's why they call it a restoration part. So all we gotta do is just slide this in without scuffing up our, up our paint. Put the bolt in. Nice. This looks awesome. I think it's gonna work. Now let's get this one in. Just sliding it right in here. And which side did I say the nut goes on? Goes on this side, right? You know, I could just ask Angela Lansbury, she would know, AKA Jessica Fletcher. So it would probably work pretty good to tighten these nuts on the car, but it shouldn't be too difficult to just hold it and do it. Plus I'm curious how how much do we want to tighten these down? Ah, see I didn't tighten it down very much and the wheel is not turning. And actually, you know what? I just thought about something. Take this nut off. I'm gonna use the, just 
the little bit of residual grease just right off this grease tube. Not much, just a little bit. Not trying to not trying to make a greasy mess here all over the roller that will just attract dirt. But this should help smooth rolling action and help uh I don't know, repel water, at least for a while. Just a little bit. And I actually can't tell you if that was really actually worth doing or not. But, I mean, how, how could it not, where's that rag? Just got to teeny little bit of grease on the threads there it's gone that's why I didn't put one reason why I didn't put a lot of grease on here is to not make a mess which we we avoided but yeah I can't tell you if you know how much of a difference this would make or if it's really going to keep it make this last longer but I mean how how could it not do how could it it can't hurt, it's grease. Okay, that's just barely snug. And the wheel barely moves. Okay, now that I've worked it back and forth, it's moving, moving better. So this is what it looks like. And this is the movement we're getting. I don't know if you can see it turning or not, but that's kind of how tight it is. But the lock washer is just, just to the point of just being flat. It's just, just starting to snug up. It feels to me like it's right at the point where the nut's not going to back off and everything's going to fall apart. But after using the uh, parking brake a number of times, I'm sure everything's going to be all worked in all nice. I don't know what this means, but I, don't know, I, I, feel, I feel good about that. It's not over tightened. It's not sloppy. It's just one of these things where you can't sit here and well, you do whatever you want, but no one's going to come rescue you. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to enter that into the computer and it's going to pull up a report telling you exactly how to tighten that. You just have to do it. Okay, we're at that same point with this one. I actually might have went to teeny tiny bit further see this feels this feels about the same that's how this one turned out pretty 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 snazzy huh and if we need to loosen this nut it's very easy to do or does that not make any sense at all I don't know if it doesn't I'm sure you'll Tell me in the comments. Let's bolt these back on the car. And there's a caveat to this. Let's, uh, let's get over here. I'll explain. We are going to install the parking brake system back on the car, but we're not tightening everything down. We're leaving everything loose because we're putting a floor in this car, so it's all going to come off anyways. I just don't want this stuff floating around, getting lost, that kind of stuff. And I want to make sure that, you know, everything looks fine and we did a good job here. And the reason why we're leaving the hardware all unpainted is because after the new floor is in and we snug our parking brake system down for final assembly, we will touch everything up that needs paint. Because the thing is, is it's not always the case, but I've been putting a lot of thought into this over the last year or so. When you got threads like this, what happens a lot is, is typically I would just 
just paint everything maybe even you know I would try try to I'd try to keep paint off of the threads of hardware so let's say I paint the head of a bolt but then what happens is is you, you do that you let it cure you've done that work and then when you go assemble things you just scratch it all up anyways so my thought here is just seeing if it's a better process to just touch the hardware up after assembly so I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work out, but we'll find out in the future. So in the previous parking brake refurbishment videos that are linked in the video description, did we end up having to toss some hardware? Was some of it just too corroded to reuse or was there some missing because we are short two screws and a lock washer. So that's kind of got me thinking, well, you know, we uh, should probably put hardware on the list because we clearly need it. But we'll just, we got what we got right now. In some spots we've got welded nuts on the bracket side. Okay, and then on the inside of the car side is welded nuts. You see what I'm saying? So we got threads like these and then we've got the same thing but on the tow board on the inside of the car. Okay, and I got the other one. Okay, and again we're not gonna tight we're not gonna tighten everything. You can see our bolts coming up through right there through our square nuts there and then the there's the two holes above where we're going to put the bolts in from this side and then that bigger hole right in the center that is where our parking brake cable goes through connects to the handle which is right here that you pull and the cable goes down through the hole you know my focus is actually starting to shift a little bit on this project because you know, I don't know if you've been watching all the videos in order or not. If you haven't or you're new here, everything's right there on the Freeman's Garage channel right here where you are now. There's a playlist for this car and everything is all there in that playlist. But any hoosers, oh, you know, just no shortage of baling wire in this car. Farm country. But anyways, lately in videos I've been talking about putting wheels and tires on the car for various reasons. And I'm actually starting to change my mind on that. Oh, come on, get in there. You're just temporary. That's fine. Because, well, I'm starting to change my mind on it. Is I actually think we should do the floor first. And I've been working on the plan of exactly how I'm going to do that. And I'm really excited about it. So I'm thinking ditch the wheel and tire. You know, I actually kind of don't know what I was thinking. The floor. Yeah. I want to I wanna focus on the floor. But that's in. And, you know, speaking of the floor, I'm looking here and I see there's a little bit of tow board patching that we'll need to do too. So that one's on and then now we're going to put this one down here. I can just barely get my fingers in there, but we got thread started. Actually, I'm an idiot. Well, I shouldn't talk like that about myself, but... I could have just moved this. Out of the way. There. Now there's a lot more room. We only have one more to get in. Alright, now let's go underneath the car. 
and see how all that's gonna work out for us. This will put our memory to test. And you know at some point I'm gonna need your help to put all this stuff back together the way it was. So I hope you're paying attention. Put your photographic memory to use. All right, hopefully we don't drop anything on our schnoz. Now this piece here, let's just get this stuff just kind of in place and then uh, we'll get the, the, oh, we'll scratch brand new paint and then we'll get the, uh, the cables in here. Now, if you've been following along with all these videos, I know I've probably said this a bunch of times, but see, ideally, I would have done the floor and everything. Yeah, actually, see here. Okay, I just dusted all this with gravel road debris. See, here's, here's part of a, uh, an issue or a challenge. And actually, why did I take the bolt out? It has to go in from that side. Ideally, I would have done the floor and all that kind of stuff first before doing things like this parking brake and whatnot. But, when you don't have a lot of green nourishment, you just kind of do what you can when you can to keep the project going. Although then again, if you don't have a lot of green nourishment, should you be building a tripod? <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, all this debris coming out of here, there's no point in trying to clean it out because this floor is getting replaced, including these these braces here. And in fact, this debris coming down on our freshly painted parts kind of makes me want to just pull the rug out from under this operation, you know, and just say, hey, it's good. We cleaned everything. We painted everything. We know it's good. We don't need to do this right now. But I don't know. I just think it's kind of kind of the thing to do right now, I guess, sort of, or, you know, I don't, I don't see any damage in it, and, you know, but yeah, I'm really excited to, oh, jeez, well, you know, a rotisserie would be ideal, too. I'll get your eyeballs up in here in just a second to see all this, but this part is going to, oh, you know, that's fine. Okay, it goes in there, and this part goes here. And we don't need to put all the washers all in the proper places right now. That's going to go like that, with that nut there. Okay, and then our spring is going to go... Oh, which end of the spring goes where again? Well, oh, the big hook's got to go... Yeah, the big hook goes here. on here. Okay, this end goes in like that. Okay, all right, let, let's get the cables. You know what, we got a little bit of a, of an issue here. Did you see this coming? Because I sure didn't. So our replacement boots here, this small end Okay, this, well, 
they sit like this, okay? And so this bigger hole here, this looks like it 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 goes uh, and then sits right here. Okay, it rests right in there. And then of course the cable's going through here. That small hole. But how do we get it on here? If you take this end off, it's never going back on the way it was. You see, because you would need to take that end off so that you can pull the cable out through all of this. And then slide the boot on your cable and then slide all this back on behind it and then secure it all in place with this. This is all just one cable. Here's one end and here's the other end. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I'm not gonna cut these in half or anything. Yeah, they're just not going on today. Yeah, I gotta figure that out. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. But let's get all this in position. And then I'll bring you in here and we'll look at everything. cable goes through this pulley there so it doesn't go through with the pulley bolted in because the the ball is too big All right but that's fine it doesn't really matter right now but that would go gosh darn it So it would go through there, bear with me, so through that pulley, and then it goes behind here, like so, ow, <laughs> and up through here, okay, so around that pulley, and then in through that hole we looked at earlier. And when it goes in through that hole, it goes through that hole, connects there, that's your parking brake handle. So when you pull the parking brake handle out, it pulls that cable. So that the, the cable would not be hanging this loose, it would be adjusted snugly. But so when you pull the parking brake handle, it pulls on the cable, which pulls this clevis, which moves this right here and it moves this and it pulls on this cable here and there's a spring that helps return everything looking at it from this side you can see that when that cable gets tight and it pulls okay, hold on i'm stuck and pulls back here which is connected to your brakes on each side see there's our cable and it's just kind of hanging over here right now but it actually goes in through this hole in the backing plate right here you see what i mean parking brake stuff not overly exciting but it's a chunk of work that would have to get done later at some point anyway so it's out of the way i've totally switched my focus to putting a floor in the car we cut the trunk floor out a long time ago and i just i'm just doing some you know you'll see some other things here in the car in the meantime because i'm working out exactly how i want to do the floor because you can get the whole floor plus the trunk in one piece or the trunk and the floor separate i think i'm going to go the floor and the trunk separate and I got a couple ideas of how I'm going to separate the body from the frame because I got to lift this up and separate everything on my own. So I need to figure that out and I want to have that figured out before I order the floor. 
because as soon as the floor shows up, well, there's, there's no room in here already as it is. So I want to be ready to go. And another thing too that the guy's got to think about for a second is, you know, I might actually do the rocker panels before separating the body from the frame and doing the floor. I might, or I might put the floor in first. I'm not sure. Oh, and yes, we did cut the trunk out a long time ago, but the reason why I'm not just going to put a trunk in because it's already cut out is because if I go with, well, if I go with the one whole piece, everything's got to come out anyways. But if I go with the trunk and the rest of the floor separate, the trunk floor, the new trunk floor actually overlaps the rest of the floor by a little bit. It overlaps kind of around in that region. There's a little bit more to it than that, but baby steps and look before you leap, I guess. Thanks for watching and subscribing and clicking the arrow button to share the videos. I appreciate you. Okay. <laughs>